There we go. Recording in All progress. Right. Well, uh, the Lord be with you. And also with you. With you. With you. Yeah, it's uh, uh, been a beautiful week weather-wise. I, I hope uh, the beautiful weather has been helpful to the people we were just talking about down in the other parts of the state. And, and you're right, uh, uh, you know, just, just uh, Daytona and um, uh, and say even St. Augustine, there was some pretty bad flooding. Uh, yes, um, it So, uh, but uh, certainly Southwest Florida and Pastor Philip drove down uh, Friday, I believe, with a, like a truckload of, uh, of supplies and stuff uh, to, couple of his former congregations to connect with them and a lot of other people have been doing it uh that likewise and just yeah. thankful for especially how god's people uh, st uh come forward uh help each other in times like that and uh, uh i didn't put it in the email uh, i was in kind of a hurry to get that out it was uh but uh the the funds that we sent to cuba finally arrived that's a long process, but uh, circuitous, and there's some fees, you know, that get deducted from the total thing. But by and large, you know, they were, um, you know, he got, uh, they were, um, all the money arrived, and my and Doe uh, uh, sent his uh, praises to God and his thanks to all of us uh, here in Jacksonville uh, that come through. And I uh, don't have an update yet on next, what the next prospect is for his. Uh, his surgery and so forth, but uh, yes. he, uh, uh, I'm sure it might have been timely because I know Cuba probably had uh, a fair amount of damage that, uh, from Ian. It came right across the western end of the island. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, anyway, uh, if there's anything else uh, anybody wanted to lift up before we uh, start looking at Hebrews again. Um, I said the boats made it through. Did I say that last week? Yes. Russell Stengel, yes. Don Treasure, and Atlanta Harbor, and then the other one was at uh, Hemingway's mm -hmm. estate. They were really concerned. They both came through very well. I mean, that's that place of ministry. Russell's there. You know. That was good. Yeah. Those boats were large. Yeah. And, and, uh, and his, but his, his uh, brother Danita Springs, that's kind of the, the Florida Bay. Oh, yeah, they mm -hmm. took, uh, yeah, they got flooded. <coughs> Chad, Chad, or Chaddy, <laughs> yeah. Well, we're uh, that's great news that he's able to be there and minister, but well, you know, and his, his uh, I certainly pray for his family. It's uh, a lot of people are really just having to completely start from scratch. Uh, uh, and uh, it's going to be a long, long process. Um, as hard as it is to just get things now on a regular basis, you can imagine uh, going through that process uh, down there where there's so much demand. And I have a um, Dan Perfilio's funeral is on Saturday. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this coming Saturday? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 15th okay 11 o'clock is that right jackie yes 11 dan is it was a <clears throat> devoted uh servant in many ways you know uh he uh assisted uh our, our brother wesley uh kale uh and helping wesley manage his finances he uh served at, on Habitat for Humanity. I worked on several houses with, with Dan and, uh, and he's been a long, has a long history of helping out uh, and uh, really a great man. We will miss, miss Dan a lot and pray for Agnes as well. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll go, let's go before the Lord here. Uh, Heavenly Father, um, gather uh, as your people uh, called in your name by faith, uh, by your grace. And uh, we uh, 
celebrate the the bond of uh, of unity that we have with all those uh, uh, who share uh, our faith in one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and uh, and, and one one God and Father of all uh, over you. And uh, we just uh, uh, rejoice uh, in this morning uh, that. Uh, uh, you call us uh, call uh, all creation to set aside, uh, and uh, we we're going to join in uh, with the rest of uh, uh, your creation and our brothers and sisters in Christ and and uh, praising you and worshiping you this morning. Uh, we uh, are going to hear from you in your word, and uh, we uh, uh, lift up our, our our concerns before you because you encourage us to do so. And uh, we, uh, we remember uh, our uh, departed brother, uh, Dan, and, uh, and his uh, uh, wife was left behind, Agnes, you know, there's a uh, uh, vet uh, who I'm sure is feeling the pain of that loss. Uh, we, uh, and we uh, rejoice, though, that, uh, that Dan uh, uh, has found uh, that a city with foundations now, that, uh, that, that ultimate home that... Uh, awaits us uh, with you and uh, that uh, he's come to know these things and uh, uh, clear more clearly than uh, than we can and uh, uh, we, uh, we we rejoice in that uh, and that hope that uh, and that assurance that uh, you have granted to us and uh, uh, we lift up all those who have suffered as a result of the storm uh, we're thankful for uh, the, the ministry of uh, of all the people of God, but in our own church, uh, how it's reached out. And uh, I just pray for the, the supplies that uh, went down with Pastor Philip uh, this week. Uh, we pray for the monies that have gone to Cuba, that they can be put to use to help relieve some of the suffering there, and perhaps even uh, help with uh, Pastor Armando's surgery. And, uh, and we ask also that you would just... Uh, uh, grant us uh, the presence of your Holy Spirit as uh, uh, we humbly look into your uh, word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's uh, always a good idea to make sure that we get the text before us. So I'm going to, I'm just going to read a section of, of, of Hebrews 11 uh, today. Uh, let's see. Uh, some of it we've uh, already studied, and some of it is, is yet ahead of us, but uh, I think uh, it's uh, helpful to have it out there uh, before us. Uh, I'll begin at verse 1 of Hebrews 11. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become the father because he made, he considered him faithful who had made the promise. 
And so from this one man, as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the heavens, and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on the earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. I'll stop there. We, uh, I think we got down through uh, the faith of Enoch uh, the last time we were together. Um, and uh, we uh, consulted the uh, biblical record and uh, went back and even consulted uh, uh, a biblically referenced uh, source, the book of Jasher. Uh, and, uh, you know, it talks about, uh, you have to think about uh, the, the incredible reward it would be uh, to have God deliver you from suffering death. He only did that to two people that we know of. Uh, there might have been others, but we only know of Enoch and Elijah. Uh, and, uh, you know, death is uh, uh, the penalty for sin. Uh, it's an hour of darkness that uh, is before uh, set, is set before every one of us. And uh, Enoch was spared that. And we kind of had to... I was all maybe curious, you know, uh, what was there about Enoch that we could find out? And I'm not going to spend much time here, but uh, just because we touched on it last week. But I want to read this uh, passage again that I read from the book of Jasher last uh, last Sunday. Uh, Enoch despised the evil ways of men. And the soul of Enoch was wrapped up in the instruction of the Lord in knowledge and understanding. And he wisely retired from the sons of men and secreted himself from them for many days and then Enoch rose up according to the word of the Lord and went forth from his house and he went to the sons of men and taught them the ways of the Lord and the spirit of God was upon Enoch and he taught all his men the wisdom of God and his ways and it says uh, you know in the, uh, the little bit we have in Hebrews that, that he not uh, Enoch faithfully walked with God, but we see also that he was a man who wanted to lead others to walk with God. Uh, he was a, uh, and he uh, 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 was described as a, as a righteous man in that passage I just read, uh, and so he was taken up from the earth uh, and commended as, uh, as one who was uh, having pleased God. Uh, it says uh, Enoch was commended as having pleased God, and so we come to that verse uh, 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 six in Hebrews 11, it says, and without faith, it's impossible to please God for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. You know, it, it kind of seems that as this chapter builds, we get a little, we flesh out our definition of what biblical faith is, you know, uh, the, the first article of it was that it was uh, the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things unseen. And then, you know, we learned that by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the, uh, by the word of God. And now we re uh, uh, are, are told that uh, faith uh, in God uh, requires uh, to believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Um you know, we, uh, I, I think there's kind of a bumper sticker theology uh, about faith uh, that, that's around. You know, you see a little ones that just say, I believe or have faith. Well, you know, I think the question is in what? Uh, that that, that uh, is really the point. Uh, and it creates the impression that uh, just uh, having faith with all my might, uh, simply the act of believing 
something uh, as fervently as possible uh, means that I should get some sort of reward. But uh, that's really not what, what we're studying here. Uh, uh, that's actually the premise of existentialism. I'm sorry? That's the first premise of existentialism. Yeah, yeah. It's fake. The question is what? Yeah. You know, the, uh, you know, that, uh, oh, a leap of faith, the, a leap of faith that, um, that sort of, uh, a grin and bear it or be grim and bear it, uh, a, a philosophy, uh, um, that, uh, was uh, espoused by the, by the Camus and the, uh, John Paul Sartre and so forth. Yeah. But uh, it's really the object of faith, uh, that makes, uh, the, uh, that is true biblical faith. Uh, it's not of my faith uh, as an act uh, of uh, of merit has really no value. Uh, it's it's the object of my faith. Uh, I, I have to yes, I have to believe steadfastly and firmly uh, in in that object. But uh, the the object of, of faith uh, is uh, is what is required. And Abel and Enoch please God. Uh, and uh, obviously they believe that uh, he existed, but uh, I think we have to note uh, that they believed in the God that is, uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one who created the heavens and the earth and so forth. Uh, there's a lot of people who claim to believe in God, you know, and so uh, you could say that their faith would be rewarded, but, um, you know, what, do they believe in the God that the living and true God, uh, like uh, like Jesus calls him. Um, you know, Muslims believe in Allah. Uh, you know, the Buddhists uh, uh, believe in an Atman. Uh, the Hindus believe in the Maya. Uh, the uh, self-professing uh, contemporary deists uh, have a thing that I call God to me. Well, God to me is this, that, or the other. And this is basically based on their wishful thinking and their moral preferences and their own desires. Well, you know, these are things that the Bible describes as worthless idols. Uh, they have really no value because uh, they're not, the, it's not the God that is. And is is the fact that he's the God that is, doesn't that have everything to do with the name that he gave Moses? When Moses asked him, he says, who are you? He goes, I am, of course. Don't you know there has to be a self-existent entity in the world? I mean, yeah, you're smart enough, Moses, to know all this. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, but uh, he is the one who is uh, and uh, the one who always will be and always has been. Um, and then, you know, knowing those things about God, knowing that he is the God that is, uh, the the necessary being, that's what uh, Thomas Aquinas called him, the ens necessarium. Uh, you know, uh, the, the something, someone, and something with being, not, not just, um, you know, a, an inanimate object, had to uh, have always existed for there to be any being to be able to be conferred to, uh, to us ourselves. Uh, and... Uh, you know, great thinkers have, have understood this idea for a long time. And I think, you know, men like Abel and Enoch uh, certainly understood at least that much. Um, but uh, they understood enough about the character and the attributes of God to seek him. Because uh, that's what, you know, it describes here. It says, uh, by faith, uh, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Whoever would seek him or would draw near to him <clears throat> must believe it exists and that he rewards those who seek him. <clears throat> How would you define what it means to seek God? I particularly think of it in the terms of these Old Testament saints who didn't have the witness of the cross and the empty tomb and even a Bible, per se. What is it? What what did it mean? For these people to seek after God. We hear by faith they did this. By faith they did that. By faith they did this. And they sought God. To look to please God. 
was yeah the, of what they knew of God, they looked to please God. They they tried to to do what He wanted them to do, and and when they uh, like uh, Abraham, when he was told to go into Promised Land, okay, don't know where I'm going, but I'm going. Mm -hmm. Yes, and 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 they, they had to have been able to discern something about about the about the kind of being that God was. To know what would please him, wouldn't that be reasonable? Is that like during the times when we pray, when we pray to God ourselves, and we say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm searching, I'm seeking, I'm, I want to be able to know you're right there. Yeah, and uh, you know, again, knowing something about, uh, we ask him for 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 things in prayer because. God encourages us to do so because he's merciful and he's compassionate. Uh, um, you know, Paul talked about those invisible attributes uh, of God that can be discerned from nature, uh, from what God, what from what has been made. And certainly there's uh, things we can discern from everything in the world around us uh, that, that, that tell us a lot about God. Uh, uh, the, you know, one of the things that's persisted as a as a, a priority, uh, whether it was the, the uh, prior to the law or during the time of the, the, the mosaic dispensation, or now, is is hearing his voice and relationship. So that's what they were seeking, and and uh, you know, it's obvious that that they were hearing from because they were getting directions. Yes. About uh, what to do and so forth. I have every reason to believe that that uh, Enoch, and, uh, what Yasher described, what Yasher described, uh, he was discipling people, mm -hmm. and 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 it had to do, do uh, with the with the wisdom that he was getting from God in his relationship. It was obviously very close. So uh, his voice is the big is the, is one of the big things, I and mean, even when it comes to the New Testament, what is it? My sheep what? In my voice, and that's and yeah, the because, prophets and the prophets all the way through. That's what they say. Right. Your, your, your we voice, just need that reassurance. Voice. You know, we know, we know, we know, but you do need reassurance. Yes, and there was obviously some mode of direct revelation. Uh, in those uh, that God engaged in, you know, it's, it's, I, it still happens. You know, we hear, we are hearing repeatedly, I heard both of our pastors mention and everything about, and missionaries talk about the dreams and visions uh, that God is using among uh, uh, the Islamic community to, to bring people to Christ. And, uh, you know, uh, perhaps it was, uh, that was the, the means by which uh, God has, uh, had spoken to uh, Abel and to Enoch and to Abraham. Uh, it says uh, actually in Genesis 12, how God had appeared to Abraham uh, and uh, however that uh, took shape. But, uh, and then uh, I, I think they also perceived uh, uh, a great deal from nature, uh, uh, from uh, the world that had been made. You know, Enoch, uh, I mean, Abel, when he brought his better offering, what did he bring? He brought the best that he had. He could see that God hadn't spared any excellence uh, in, in in creating the universe. I hadn't spared, uh, you know, any goodness uh, in making the world around him. Uh, and um, that uh, uh, Enoch obviously perceived that, uh, uh, that, that God wanted his righteousness made known. Uh, and that God had created man in his image for righteousness. Uh, this is why he uh, went to teach people the ways of the Lord and, 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 and instruct them in, uh, uh, about God. Uh, and uh, so uh, this seeking God has a lot to do with responding to him according to who he is uh, and recognizing and knowing him for what he and, and, and who he is. Uh, but I think uh, what it is about faith that... Uh, I don't know. I thought a lot about this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You know, that, that's the old universal negative. Uh, what 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 does what does faith represent? Uh, I I think each of these men was seeking something from God 
that they know they couldn't provide for themselves, something they couldn't do for themselves. Or there was a humility uh, uh, in faith that, that says, you know, uh, I'm going to have to rely on you. I'm going to have to get in the wheelbarrow on the on the tightrope uh, uh, here because uh, I can't possibly get across that uh, that tightrope myself. Uh, I, I've got to be able to uh, uh, rely on you to do so for me what I can't do for myself. Um, and uh, it, it's a, it reflected a dependence, uh, a, a need for God's grace. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, that's what, that, that's, that's what God wants to see uh, in, in that, uh, uh, in that uh, faith is not necessarily me just believing hard, but believing uh, that God is, uh, uh, is gracious and merciful and that uh, I, I know I can't, uh, I can't uh, be rewarded uh, without uh, having exercised uh, uh, that admission of, uh, of humility uh, and that admission of need. I don't know if, if that, uh, th does that make sense? It does, it's not recognition of your own righteousness is enough. Yes. God has to be loved. Absolutely. Like provide the clothes for Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and you know, and this is uh, why, don't you think, you talk about that I need righteousness from God. I need God to 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 to, to find a way to make up for my uh, deficient, my moral deficiency. Uh, is uh, is why the the work of Christ uh, on the cross saved people before the cross, at the time of the cross, and and going forward from the cross. Uh, it was uh, uh, it was the faith that God would make some sort of provision. Well. That provision was Christ, uh, and uh, they may not have fully understood that part. Uh, but you know, it's it's, it's uh, those same words of a Abraham uh, uh, when Isaac was spared, uh, uh, and Jehovah Jireh on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Uh, future tense uh, that God would provide uh, provide the uh, the sacrifice uh, for sin that was necessary. Uh, even for, uh, for for faithful Abraham. And the, the word that says in regards to the timeless aspect of the whole sacrifice of Christ, what is it described him as the lamb slain before the foundation of the world? There you go. So in the mind of God, you know, that was already there. And uh, yeah, we, um, we see in the context of the book of Hebrews, why he's labored all this about Jesus up to this point. And now he's pointing uh, to the that timelessness and universality of, of, of Christ's work uh, by going all the way back to the second son of Adam and, uh, you know, the antediluvians and, uh, uh, and so forth. And uh, uh, to make the point that, uh, these men uh, were exercising faith that, that God uh, would, would provide that anointed one, would provide that, that great high priest someday, some way, uh, and that uh, they would be able to be justified. And um, this is uh, uh, why the, uh, the work of Christ is, uh, is held up so supremely in this book. Well, you know, he just goes chronologically. We we get Abel, Enoch, and then Noah. Uh, verse 7, by faith Noah, being warned concerning events as yet unseen. Boy, that unseen word keeps coming up in this thing. Uh, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. The... Um, Again, we have, like I said, the unseen thing at, uh, and how um, you think about how much unseenness that Noah had to had to work with. And just imagine all of the people on the earth that were there where he was building an ark were making fun of it. Had to be. All the right. time. And uh, but he hit by faith, as it says here, he knew what was going to happen. He knew something 
is going to happen. And uh, how many years was it that it took to build the ark? It was, Judging from this, it looks like it was almost a hundred, uh, yeah, somewhere yeah. around a, a hundred years, because yeah. he was five hundred when the uh, the account of Noah starts, and six hundred when he got in the ark. Um, I, 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 I uh, transcribed some of the uh, stuff from uh, Genesis 6, uh, you know, and uh, as you said, uh, the, the people around him uh, had to have, uh, you know, thought uh, he was just uh, wacky and out of his mind. A nut job here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's uh, how far inland even that Noah was. Uh, where he built the ark, uh, you know, this wasn't a place where you have floods. Uh, and uh, but uh, it said uh, how the Lord saw that the wickedness of man on the earth was great, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The Lord was sorry that he had made man upon the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. The Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land. But then we read, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a righteous man, We've been talking about righteousness, blameless in his time, and Noah walked with God. It was the same thing they said about, uh, about Enoch. And so there was, this is the great grandson of Enoch, by the way. And so there was at least one man who uh, had the, had a, uh, after God's own heart. And it's a good thing for us that there was at least one. Uh, and, uh, because uh, So then God says to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them, and behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. So make for yourself an ark. Now, I don't know how much experience Noah had had with uh, God's faithfulness and keeping his promises, uh, how much, uh, um, uh, you know, there was a lot of unseen stuff he had to go on. And as you point out, he had to persevere for a long time. The colossal undertaking of gathering up everything it took to build it. I mean, like I, said, I think I've told you all many times, you know, Vivian, I visited that ARC experience in Kentucky. It was supposedly built to scale. Uh, and uh, uh, it would be kind of gives you an idea of the staggering nature of such a project. But uh, anyway, um, and he did it all by hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's true. Uh, it's longer than just building in the family life, isn't it? It's about. Yeah, it's about. I think it is. And he had, you know, he had the um, residuals from, uh, you know, Enoch's ministry. Also, he had a he had kind of a, a biblical timeline in a sense. In regards to uh, uh, a prophetic name, uh, Methuselah, which literally means, you know, when he dies, it will come. So, in regards, well, it didn't happen until Methuselah died. So, you know, as long as Methuselah was alive, <laughs> you've got time to get the job. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Dave, you mentioned about the uh, people around him. Uh, the um, Apostle Peter, uh, in his test, described Noah as a preacher of righteousness. So it wasn't like Noah, um, you know, just sat there and just built the ark. Uh, that uh, he tried to warn other people that there's a, there's a coming judgment. Uh, God uh, is upset. Uh, he's basically he was one of those guys who was saying repent and believe because the judgment is coming. This is exactly what no, uh, as a preacher of righteousness probably is what he was doing. Um, and uh, when it says that he condemned the world, I think this is kind of what it gets at. You know, his faithfulness to God revealed the unbelief and the uh, and the sin of the people that were around him. Uh, you know, Noah's uh, steadfastness to, to, to stick to uh, what God had told him, uh, even though it was unseen, he couldn't see a flood, uh, he couldn't see the floodwaters rising yet or anything else, uh, or I did, how that was going to take place. He was warning others and, 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 and continued with his preparations that uh, God said he would use to deliver him and his family. And uh, so uh, in the condemnation, Noah was ultimately vindicated by his deliverance through water and uh, his uh, the unbelieving generation of men 
uh, uh, in those days where the the the, the sons of uh, of God had come in with the daughters of men uh, and uh, and made this evil generation. Uh, they all perished. Um, but the uh, you know the mindset of uh, Noah's generation persists, and uh, we're, we're warned about that. Uh, the Apostle Paul described the resurrection of Jesus. I know I go use this a lot. Uh, this often is a sign of warning that God's appointed a day when he will judge the world with righteousness. Uh, Peter uses the uh, example of Noah uh, to uh, describe the lackadaisical and unbelieving attitude of people uh, in, in this time, in the last days. Listen to this from, uh, from 2 Peter 3. Scoffers will come in the last day with scoffing. Now, they were scoffing at Noah for sure, you know. Uh, following their own sinful desires. They will say, where is the promise of his coming? Referring to the second coming of Christ. For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. But they deliberately overlook this fact that the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God. And that by means of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished but by the same word the heavens and the earth that now exist are stored up for fire being kept until the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly and then you know i, I can't resist uh uh quoting what jesus has to say uh about this very same matter in matthew 24 Verse 36, Jesus says this, no one knows about that day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven nor the son, but only the father, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the son of man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. And so uh, this, uh, th this same warning uh, and this same uh, faith uh, of, in what's unseen, in our case, uh, the, coming of, the second coming of Christ and the coming of the new Jerusalem, uh, is is the faith that we're being called to have? That, that that's the unseen event. That's the uh, uh, that uh, we uh, we look forward to. And uh, Jesus uh, in that in that uh, discourse just says, "Keep watch, be ready, be alert. You don't know the day on which your uh, your Lord will come." And uh, uh, just as uh, Noah, he he worked on that ark and worked on that ark, uh, so he would be ready. Uh, when the day would come, although he didn't probably know exactly when the flood would begin. And so uh, I think, you know, we're, we have to, uh, we can uh, carry away a lot uh, uh, from the example of Noah, uh, even to our day, uh, based on these uh, words uh, from the New Testament scriptures and how, uh, the, uh, how Jesus and the apostles uh, uh, use this uh, as an example of, um, of, um of faith uh and uh of the the, the fact that uh, god will uh, eventually uh require an accounting uh from uh, uh, uh from all men and uh and public for their sins so uh that's uh that gets us down through noah uh i think we're going to stop there and uh you know I, I, although i I spoke about him earlier. I told you we'd be circling back to Abraham, but there, there's no way you can really talk about faith very much and, and talk about the Old Testament without talking about Abraham. I mean, he is uh, the uh, synonymous with the with the the word of faith just about. But uh, um, this is uh, always interesting territory for me. The uh, Hebrews 11. I, I've always loved reading this because. Uh, uh, it uh, takes us back to the Old Testament. So uh, we've got, um, you know, Moses and uh, Jacob and Joseph uh, all ahead of us as well. So.
anyway. Well, uh, there's any more, uh, maybe any closing remarks or comments before we uh, really finish up today? regards to Jesus pointing out major signs, that was one part of his, his coming. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it, it has as much to do with the milieu at that time, what brought the judgment as it does the event itself. And the, and the suddenness of the event, suddenness of the judgment. Sometimes people only want to look at how sudden it is, but there was a milieu, a spiritual milieu and moral milieu that existed mm -hmm. then. And likewise, the second one is, is, is that he says that in the days of Lot. Yes, well, that's true. Uh, just uh, on par with what you just read. Those two, those two, uh, those two events, and <laughs> and all that surrounded them. I heard a great sermon uh, one time. Uh, it might be the second shortest verse in the in the Bible. <laughs> Remember Lot's wife. Yeah, and uh, it's. Uh, it was, it was really good, uh, but uh, a pretty powerful one. Yes, uh, the, um, we got to, we got a lot of it. Uh, while we were given the Old Testament uh, to, uh, as instruction, you know, uh, uh, to uh, point us forward to things that were yet to come. I think it's interesting. Uh, on the advance of this portion, both you quoted from the answer in regards to life. And Historical, this historical book in regards to Enoch, but what Yasser has to say about um, why, what he has to say. I'll have to look forward and read that. Noah. Yes, please do. Yeah. Because uh, actually, uh, uh, when it comes to the uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, it goes quite a bit detail, Yasser does, in regards to some things that actually happened prior to the, to the angels. So forth in regards to dealings with uh, Abraham's dealings or with uh, citizens, and, and and in regards to the uh, the uh, the uh, his his gathering his forces to rescue his nephew, <laughs> but uh, there's other all, all, all sorts of other things that are you can't put on the level of scripture. They they certainly give us pause to to think and to evaluate. Yeah, it, it was a blessing to have it. I'm, and I'll, I'm going to press forward. And, uh, and then to see this and all of us, too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, close with a word of prayer. And um, Father, we uh, uh, thank you for uh, the testimony of your word and the testimony of, of the faith of, uh, of our forefathers, of our, uh, the patriarchs uh, uh, that um, uh, from, from whom we can learn so much. And uh, we uh, ask you to uh, instruct us and, and uh, correct us and train us in righteousness uh, uh, from uh, the word that uh, we have heard from them today and uh, that uh, uh, we might serve you uh, as uh, by faith uh, because we know we want to please you <laughs> and uh, uh, we, uh, we want to seek you and uh, as you uh, desire to be sought. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go ahead and cut the recording, please. We'll see everybody next week. Okay. okay. Have a nice weekend.